Welcome to the fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Award. The Commonwealth Digital Health Award is a flagship project of the Digital Health Initiative of the Commonwealth Medical Association. It has been a long journey to this moment since its inception in 2016. It was particularly challenging this year with the obstacles caused by the pandemic situation. But nevertheless, it has been fulfilling fun. It was refreshing to see the ideas and the innovation, making positive changes around the world. So congratulations to all of you. To commence with today's formalities, let me now call upon the chairman of the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health, Professor Vajira Disanayaka, to welcome the gathering. Prof. Vajira is also the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Council and the dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. Good evening to all of you from Colombo. It is evening here, but I'm, I know that it is uh, morning, uh, noon, and night uh, in uh, various parts of the world. So a good day to everybody who is joining us from around the world. We are coming to the end of a challenging year, and um, the Commonwealth uh, Digital Health Awards, too, face the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. We were getting ready for the um, awards in Geneva in May this year, but that was not to be. But that enabled us to widen the scope of the awards and to hold our usual judging process virtually, enabling more and more participants or applicants to take part. That led to a successful process of judging uh, virtually. And today, we've come to the grand finale of the fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Awards, the award ceremony itself. I would like to begin by thanking the organizers of the awards, my team uh, in Colombo, led by Professor um, uh, Dr. Pandula Siripadana and uh, energetic team of um, enthusiasts uh, uh, from our Commonwealth Center for Digital Health Hub in, um, in Southampton, uh, led by Professor James Bachelor and the team of Commonwealth Digital Health Fellows there. It has been a truly um, global um, organizing committee. Uh, and of course, the um, array of judges was truly global, from Australia to US uh, to Canada, uh, from Africa to Europe, uh, um, across the globe. 
So I'm uh, particularly pleased that we've been able to um, hold the awards this year and to do the judging process uh, also successfully. And today, come to this uh, event where we are going to announce the winners. I would like to say a particular word of thanks uh, to the Inter uh, International Telecommunication Union, ITU, its um, uh, Deputy Secretary General, Malcolm Johnson, uh, and all the, the entire digital team, um, and uh, for everybody at ITU uh, who helped us along the way. And I'd also like to thank, uh, say a particular word of thanks to uh, the uh, team uh, at uh, Digital Health Team at uh, the WHO, uh, led by uh, uh, Bernardo um, uh, and uh, his team uh, for all the encouragement and support that they always give the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health. And then, of course, um, uh, the entire team at the, uh, um, at the Commonwealth Secretariat uh, always uh, supporting us, and I would like to thank uh, the entire team at the Commonwealth Center of the Secretariat, starting uh, from the Secretary General, uh, Baroness Patricia Scott, Scotland, and her entire team for all the support and encouragement that they always give us. So with those words, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Awards, and I hope you will enjoy this evening of uh, celebration. Uh, celebrating the best of digital innovations from the Commonwealth and beyond. Enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. The objective of the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards is to provide a platform for digital entrepreneurs, innovators, and researchers from around the world to showcase their products and solutions. The submissions were judged by an imminent panel of judges from around the world that represented industry, academia, development partners, as well as practitioners. The following is an introduction to our judging panel.
I would like to now introduce Professor James Bachelor, who is the chairman of the judging panel. Professor Bachelor is the Associate Dean, International Research and Enterprise, University of Southampton. He will describe the judging criteria for the Commonwealth Digital Health Award with you. Uh, good evening, everybody. And um, once again, just from uh, my perspective, uh, a warm welcome to everybody from around the world for this evening's um, uh, ceremony of the fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. Um, on behalf of myself and the rest of the panel judges, I'd like to congratulate everybody in participating uh, this year. Again, it's a highlight of my year to be able to um, uh, judge this exciting uh, uh, panel of submissions. And I'm going to quickly just explain some of the criteria that we were looking at as the judging panel. So we had a number of individual um, areas which we were looking at, which uh, was evidence base, innovativeness, frugalness, technology use, scalability, and the use of digital, criteria, uh, digital platforms. And these criteria are important, I think, in particular in these awards to look at how um, uh, digital innovation is meeting real world criteria and problems that digital can help solve within the healthcare setting. And in particular, it's incredible to have seen a number of different applications uh, which took um, very innovative approaches to being able to solve these challenges. Um, in particular, what's interesting uh, every year during this judging panel is the absolute enthusiasm of the, uh, the participants in describing the work they're doing, the exciting uh, challenges they've had and the exciting successes they've had. And it's always a, a thrill to see how um, we've seen a continued uh, growth in the number of individuals participating year on year. So as you're aware, uh, most of you will have been through the judging process uh, and will have presented. And, um, uh, and then as a judging panel, we were able to ask a number of questions of you and taking all of this into consideration, the judges across both virtual and the day uh, we did judging in, in person, we were able to go through and score against each of these individual criteria to denominate a total score. And only last week, we were able to verify and review all of the judges' uh, uh, votes across all of the different submissions. And I'm pleased to say we have now come to the highlight of um, uh, revealing the awards uh, uh, for each of the individual criteria. Thank you again for your participation uh, this year. And uh, uh, although this has been a challenging year, we managed, I think, uh, very successfully to do this online. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to see everybody in person next year for the next, for the fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. Thank you. I would like to invite Dr. Pandula Siribhadra to give us the moderator of the panel of judges to explain the judging process. So hello everyone. So as uh, Professor James Bachelor explained, uh, the judging uh, included uh, criteria that we have uh, developed over the years from 2016 that has resulted in identifying um, innovations that can be scaled up as well as uh, benefit back uh, many countries, especially the low and middle income countries. Now in uh, Judging, we have adopted a rigorous process. I will explain it in brief uh, as we value 
the transparency in the judging process as well as um, uh, the standards that we have maintained in uh, arriving at these results. Initial submissions were first screened by a panel of experts uh, based on a set of criteria developed uh, by the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health and its partners. And these uh, submissions thereafter were the finalists that had to, uh, that, that were provided with the chance to a live presentation in front of the judging panel. We had uh, more than 30 judges involved in this whole process and each submission was presented to a panel where there were about five or six judges present during the live session. Following the live session, the same submissions were subjected to another set of uh, 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 assessment by a set of offline judges uh, who used the same criteria. Following two weeks of offline judging, all these judges met uh, and decided on the final outcome for each category. So you can understand that the process involved multiple judges with varying background from the industry, from academia, from donor agencies, as well as uh, uh, from various other sectors that contribute to digital health. And the final decisions by the panel of judges was the final decision that you see today. And I'm sure this process has ensured a transparent and a rigorous assessment of each submission. And finally, I think we have uh, been able to identify uh, some of the best innovations coming from, uh, from many different parts of the world. But a word of note should be mentioned because Winning in this event alone does not mean that the rest of the submissions or the finalists uh, that we have uh, we have selected uh, uh, are of less worth. I am considering this judging process only allowed us to recognize some of the submissions and uh, recognize them for the web. But the contribution by the final and those submissions are well noted. And I'm sure those uh, should also be recognized. And this uh, event does that uh, in its own way. Thank you. I would like to invite Mr. Bernard Mariano Jr., representing the World Health Organization, to address the gathering. Mr. Mariano Jr. is the Chief Information Officer and he is also the Head of the Digital Health, Digital Health WHO. Good morning, good afternoon. Happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. Let me first congratulate all participants for the hard work, the dedication, and the priority you have placed on improving people's health. I want also to congratulate the whole team behind the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. Special congratulations to the winners for the spirit of innovation and the positive changes that the, the, the creativity, uh, practical and impactful ideas will have to many, to many of us actually. Commonwealth Digital Health Award is timely in many ways. Today, more than ever, digital technologies and innovations holds a endless potential to protect people that are less fortunate and to protect 
every one of us. We can witness in our everyday life, digital technologies already transforming healthcare systems around the world. All these technologies are revealing more and more opportunities to improve health and well-being worldwide, to transform economy worldwide and to stimulate growth worldwide. During COVID-19 pandemic, and as we live through this pandemic, let's remember this is the very first pandemic in the digital age. And digital technologies are helping to screen populations, support contact tracing, be as part of a public health response, accelerate, accelerate clinical trials, but also address supply chain challenges for medicines and vaccine, just to name few. And digital technologies are a powerful tool that can strengthen health systems and improve care, bringing us farther down the road to achieve the universal health coverage. And innovation, to, to achieve the universal health coverage, innovation is indispensable and especially in digital health ecosystem. It is indispensable to accelerate those achievements, uh, the, which is enshrined in sustainable development goals number three, or all sustainable development goals related to health. The scope of innovation in health encompasses social innovation, new change products, business models, financial innovation, process innovation, service delivery, and new ways to work and partnering. And we I hope with the, this pandemic, we have seen that we need those new ways of working and partnering. To successful scale and sustain innovation solution for impact, it must cover three areas. It must be people's, it must be driven by people's health needs must be inclusive in a way that everyone can benefit from it, contribute from it, and we, sh we should not leave anyone behind. It must be sustainable, local, regional, global level. It must harness the culture of continuous learning, continuous improvement, including learning from failure. So digital health tools in, that encompass all these criteria will have an optimized patient and people's health outcome. However, disparity exists, especially in the quality, safe use, access, and as well as issues on ethical, and let, let's not leave alone on access of technology for low income and then the undeserved an underserved community. So without proper governance and safeguards, digital technologies can hurt people, the same people that we intend to serve. That's why at WHO we developed and the member states approved the global strategy on digital health, which provides a framework for regulating and benchmarking digital health solutions, health data, but also ensuring that we bring digital health to accelerate and sustain the, 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 that transformation of healthcare sector in a way that we breed, build trusted ecosystems. So with appropriate oversight and regulatory guidance, digital technologies are vital to build healthier, safer world that we all want. So I want again to congratulate all of you for the hard work your dedication, your ingenuity, your life-changing ideas that can truly make a difference in improving health of people, communities, and all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mariano. I would like to now invite Dr. Bilal Janusi, of the International Telecommunication Union to address the gathering. Mr. Chamusi is the head of uh, chief of the study groups department of the Telecommunication Standardization Bureau of the ITU.
Greetings to all. I'm very pleased to join the fourth Commonwealth Digital Health Award ceremony today from Geneva, Switzerland, on behalf of ITU, to say a few words about digital health innovation as we value the ITU partnership with the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health. Uh, I join uh, my colleague and friend, Mr. Bernardo Mariano from the WHO to congratulate the winners and to say a word of kudos for the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health for its leadership in this domain. Digital health implies the application and use of information and communication technologies or ICTs in the health sector. The words digital and health bring together two sets of domain experts the digital or ICT experts and the health experts. The dialogue and partnership of these two domains of expertise is critical to the success of innovative digital health solutions. The innovation and partnership for digital health have been progressing over several years to achieve universal health coverage. However, this year due to COVID-19, both innovation and partnership have seen unprecedented acceleration in pace. Allow me to share some examples where ITU working in close partnership with WHO has brought new international standards and development programs in digital health. Some areas that are well established and where standards have been published and solutions deployed include personal connected health devices, also known as the Continua Design Guidelines, safe listening, preventing a silent disease as hearing loss is not perceived, Telemedicine and remote health monitoring, an area that is becoming critical during COVID times to deliver health services remotely. Another area of development, the Be Healthy, Be Mobile, has raised more than $10 million for projects, including a project with the European Commission to establish an end health innovation hub in Europe. Over the past five years, the initiative has accomplished significant reach an impact supporting 16 programs in 12 countries and reaching over 3.7 million users. Toolkits and content libraries provide guidance on non-communicable diseases and the planning, implementation, and evaluation of national and health programs. The initiative partners with UN agencies, private sector, academia, government, and civil society, and we are now uh, planning the strategy for phase two, which includes expanding the reach to at least 100 million people, further development, uh, further developing the content library and increasing the number of partnerships. My colleague, Mr. Henny Iskander, who was on the uh, judging panel, is the coordinator of this initiative. And we're very pleased that Henny took part in the uh, judging panel for the award ceremony. Now, if we move to the new and emerging work, especially in the AI for health area, the ITU WHO focus group on artificial intelligence for health, a multi-stakeholder effort working towards the establishment of a framework and associated processes for the performance benchmarking of AI for health solutions. The focus group's work has highlighted the value of AI capabilities to health areas including outbreak detection, symptom assessment, radiology, and volumetric chest computer tomography. Its work continues to demonstrate growing recognition that AI and other digital technologies can play a key part in contending with health emergencies from the stages of prevention and preparedness to early outbreak detection, response containment, mitigation, recovery, and rehabilitation. Advances in AI and other digital technologies hold great promise for the health sector. This promise has been in, on display throughout the response to COVID-19. This work is nascent and its success hinges on worldwide engagement of digital and health experts. We thank the WHO for its partnership as well as the Botnar Foundation for its support of this work and invite experts to join our open platform, the ITU WHO focus group on artificial intelligence for health to continue to progress this work. Now, finally, to deliver on the promise of digital health, 
connectivity remains a priority for almost half of the world population. Our latest ITU report shows a persistent urban-rural connectivity gap. Connectivity gaps in rural areas are particularly pronounced in least developed countries or LDCs, where 17% of the rural population lives in areas with no mobile coverage at all, and 19% of the rural population is covered by only a 2G network. So this remains our challenge to uh, work on to deliver on the digital health solution promise. Again, and I would like to close by congratulating the winners. I thank our partners, the WHO and the Commonwealth Center for Digital Health, and uh, wish you a very successful ceremony. Thank you very much. It is finally the time all of you are eagerly waiting for. Let us now start the preview and the giveaway of the first set of awards for the categories Communicable and Non-Communicable Diseases. Let us start with the Communicable Diseases. The following is an intro consisting of extracts from the video clips submitted by the final. So we're excited to share the Commonwealth Partnerships for Antimicrobial Stewardship Smartphone app. So this is an app we've been developing, which is going to provide all the information you need to use antimicrobials effectively at your fingertips. We've designed this app to provide easy access to medicine management information for treating um, diseases with antimicrobials, as well as stewardship resources. IMS is the largest health software project undertaken in Sri Lanka to record and to report on all the STD HIV patients in one single database which is highly secure and it was produced locally. The system is very easy to use as you can see from this reception screen. The registration of patients is done only once and they receive a barcoded ID card which they can use in the future. There are many reports available in the system. The patients get appointments to see the doctor. An overview screen appears showing a summary of all the patients' activities in the clinic. This is the first national health protection system to shield the country from stepping malaria, filaria, TB and AIDS into the country through migrant workers. To obtain a working visa each and every worker has to get through this system and get the health certificate in order to obtain the relevant visa. Every year these workers have to repeat this and certify to continuous work. Starting from getting online appointment registration counseling radiology for botany and consultation to go through to obtain the final health certificate. In case they diagnose with any of those four disease symptoms the patient has to move to the relevant national campaign which has already been digitized with online systems. Kahila is an award-winning innovation, rigorously demonstrated to improve health and quality of life while reducing the costs of care. We're patient-centered and provider-desired with a sustainability model designed to save lives at scale. With Kahila, 22 million people don't need to die from the diseases we've already solved. Kahila, healing within the community. To know more, visit us at www.kahila.com and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.
the high TB burden and poor management of TB cases in Malawi, Baobab Health Trust, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, has developed a tuberculosis electronic health record system. The system provides a digital registration, appointments, follow-ups, and reporting of TB cases. The system integrates national TB guidelines and uses an environmentally friendly solar system. For healthcare workers, it allows for seamless and easy patient care. For patients, it enforces patient care for And the winners are Congratulations to the joint winners and uh, may I now invite the representatives from EHR, uh, EHR TV from Malawi to speak to your viewers. Um, uh, hello everyone across the world. Um, uh, with great joy, I would like to appreciate uh, Commonwealth Digital Health Awards and also uh, the panelists and uh, the organizers and also um, the government of Malawi who uh, accepted this uh, project to work out and also who have worked hand in hand to implement the project across 30 hospitals in uh, Malawi and also uh, I would like to appreciate uh, Baobab Health Trust who and all the staff who were involved in designing and developing the project, as well as um, uh, the support we got from different partners such as Global Fund and, and other stakeholders. And um, with great joy, I really appreciate. Thank you very much for um, uh, allowing us to be part of this great um, uh, uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now invite the representatives from EIMS of the National STD AIDS Control Program of Sri Lanka to speak a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, Good evening and good morning. Uh, I am Dr. Arya Ratna, who coordinated the development of EIMS software. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to be present here and receive this recognition from the prestigious Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. It's a very proud moment indeed. As the seminit of the National STDH Control Program Sri Lanka, we implemented EIMS software in uh, 2019. Many people have contributed to this achievement. I thank my director, Dr. Asanjali, and Global Fund Portfolio Manager, Mrs. Blanca, for their support throughout this endeavor. I wish to thank Dr. Paul, Mr. Ruben, and all his entire team in Luna Technologies for the development and support provided to implement this software. I also like to thank the superb team of SimUnit who have behind this uh, success. Uh, I would like to name them Dr. Morelli, Amila, Pramod Lakshan, and also the support given by Dr. Anuruddha and Dr. Lahiru were instrumental in the development of EIMS as well as submission of this product to Commonwealth Digital Awards. There are many others who have supported this effort in numerous ways. Numerous ways. I thank you all. Finally, the organizers of the Commonwealth Digital Awards, you have done a remarkable job in organizing this competition. Thank you for providing this recognition to us. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. 
We also have another award to be presented, and that is the Jury Special Mention. The Jury Special Mention for the category of Communicable Diseases to Congratulations to CWPAMS for obtaining the jury special mention. And we wish you, the winners and the finalists, all the very best. Let us now move on to the category of communicable diseases. What follows is an intro video consisting of the extracts from the finalists. Networks is on a mission to empower people with diabetes by providing them with better control over their diabetes data. We present to you the compact Glucage glucose meter. Glucage is an Android smartphone based glucose meter that conveniently plugs into your phone's audio jack. You can then use the Medworks application to view, save and share your diabetes related data. You can also set reminders for blood glucose measurement, medicines and insulin. has not been awarded in this category. However, we have, uh, we have jury special mentions for the uh, category of non-communicable diseases. Congratulations to both uh, Himu Start from Sri Lanka and the National Services Library from Sri Lanka for winning the special mention from the jury. And also congratulations to the other winners in the uh, communicable diseases category and uh, to the finalists of the non-communicable diseases category. We wish you all the best in the future. Let's move to the next category which is telemedicine and telecare. Telemedicine. The following is the intro video consisting of the extracts from the file.
Over the years at the Medical Concierge Group, we have been known by many names. WhatsApp doctors, online doctors, social media doctors. So we're taking the best of what you know us for and we're introducing a new service and we're calling it Rocket Health. Healthcare now for tomorrow. Healthcare is notorious for long queues and shocking bills. When you sign up to Rocket Health Advantage plans, we bring the clinic to the comfort of your home, your workplace, your school, or wherever it is that you find convenient. Our customized plans are tailored to meet all your personal healthcare needs, and they start from as little as 100,000 shillings per year. I'm Dr. William Wasser, presenting an adaptive integrated hospital management platform. So our inspiration to this is the manual patient files management, no interrupted among systems and lack of decision support in hospital due to lack of automated systems. So our platform provides an integrated hospital management system with human resource, finance, inventory, facilities and patient information management with the capability of image analysis like we have achieved for perhaps years and also currently working on COVID-19. My name is Sally. I'm a research scientist. I work mainly on microscopic organisms. I first came across the EM1 when I was looking for a microscope that I could use as a research scientist, but also one that I could recommend to educators and community groups and interested amateurs who are all looking for a microscope that was affordable but also high quality. Obviously the best thing about the EM1 is that it's extremely portable. At Doctors, we bridge the two problems via technology. And so what we do is we equip nurses with tablets and smartphones and then they connect patients to remotely located doctors via HD video consultation using a proprietary telemedicine platform. By 2020, Doctors will have impacted at least a million lives while reintegrating a thousand female doctors into the workforce. First, we have a merit award being given away for the category of telemedicine and telecare. And the merit award goes to Congratulations to team doctors from Pakistan for uh, winning the Merit Award. And now the award for the runner-up in the category of telemedicine and telecare. The runner-up award goes to Congratulations to Team uh, Mondactor from Bangladesh for winning the runner-up award. And now the much-awaited announcement of the winner for the category of telecare and telemedicine. And the winners are... Congratulations to the joint winners, and may I first invite the representative from Rocket Health Uganda to speak a few words. Hello, good afternoon, good morning. I'm uh, Louis from Rocket Health Uganda. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizers of the prestigious Commonwealth Doctor Health Awards for the opportunity they gave us to showcase uh, Rocket Health services to the global world. Uh, in addition, I also want to thank the Minister of Health uh, for the guidance, uh, for the stewardship uh, they have given us and supported us, uh, giving us a conducive environment uh, to practice digital health uh, telemedicine in Uganda. I would like to thank, to thank my teammates, uh, Dr. Davis Musingurizi, the Managing Director, and uh, Dr. John Mark uh, Buanika, the director of operations uh, for the support and initiative uh, they have given us uh, to push 
forward the Rocket Health uh, brand. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you very much. He would have been delighted to have him on microscopes from UK to also speak to the gathering, but unfortunately, they are not for such a day. So, uh, we would move on to the next award. Uh, judges have also given a special mentioning for this category, and the judges' special mentioning goes to. Congratulations to all the winners, runners up, and merit and special recognition awardees, as well as the finalists. And we wish you all the best for our future endeavors. We will now move on to the next category, which is health education and health promotion. The first up will be the introduction video consisting of the clips submitted by the finalists. Systems to deliver meaningful continuing education to health workers in remote areas are notoriously poor. Uniquely, World Medical Education has developed an app mobile phone database system that delivers video-based state-of-the-art education, continuing education and assessment of health workers in the remotest locations in the absence of the internet. An SMS from a central database can be sent to health workers with a code that unlocks a continuing education video in the user's phone. This is empowers people living with HIV with information, motivation and skills to improve adherence to the antiretroviral therapy regime, the ART, which is an integral part of the HIV treatment. What does the app do? Through videos, infographics and quizzes, the app informs, educates and communicates the importance of maintaining ART medication schedules to a recently diagnosed individual. Individual gets points for watching videos, reading infographics, and answering quizzes correctly. How does it work? The app forms the connection between the patient and the HIV counselor. The patient is encouraged to download and install the app, which is activated with ART counselor credentials. Confidentiality is maintained by setting PIN passcodes. The patient... <laughs> Most of the projects don't focus on the teachers, they focus on the learners. An innovative new program is changing this, providing teachers with the knowledge and skills they need to live a healthier life. The Kazi Health Program forms part of the broader Kazi Bantu project. This is a Swiss South African initiative focusing on improving the overall health and well-being of primary school children and their teachers in disadvantaged communities. Hi, my name is Tomas Gornick and I'm the founder and CEO of Better and the co-chair of the Open EHR Foundation. Our, our mission at Better is to simplify the work of care teams to improve lives. So the 
problem we're tackling is that today solutions keep coming. And as tells, so there's a clear need to separate the two. Architectures for the future will have a vendor neutral data layer at the center so that this data can be used by all the apps, applications, and algorithms around it. First, the Merit Award for the category of Health Education and Health Promotion. And the Merit Award goes to Congratulations to the Council Health Biopath team from South Africa for winning the Merit Award. And now the winner in the category of Health Education and Health Promotion. And the winner is... Congratulations to the Team Better Platform from Slovenia. And may I invite a representative from the Team Better Platform to speak with you. Hello, everyone. So my name is Jovan Pavicevic. Uh, I'm a partner channel manager at Better. Our CEO, Tomasz Gornik, who gave the speech, uh, couldn't join. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity to participate in this event. Um, I'd like to take, of course, the government of Malta for giving us opportunity to work on this project uh, with which we apply to this event and our partners, Microsoft and uh, PTL, and of course, the whole team that has delivered the solution. Thank you. Congratulations to both Better Platform and Kasi Health Mobile Lab. We also congratulate the other finalists and we wish you all the very good. Now we move on to the next category, which is EduTech. What follows is an intro video consisting of the extracts from the submissions of the finalists. What if we can direct the tech enthusiasm of young generation towards innovation and creativity for better mental health and develop future innovators to find practical solutions for problems in important sectors like health with new smart technologies? Magic Week is an integrated development platform for learning and practicing new technologies like electronics, robotics, IoT, and computer programming.
I'm Dr. William Oso, presenting ESTRAC, which is an integrated national school's electronic registry. The inspiration to this is the poor monitoring of schools, lack of community engagement, and non statistical facts about schools in the country. So our solution can support the Minister of Education and support to register all schools in the country, take track of teachers, DEOs, and resources, and also the schools can update their profiles, have communication within the schools themselves and also find market for what they need also the public to engage in schools communication so the front end consists of a platform where people can search for any school they want and also we have the COVID-19 response first let us see who have won the merit awards in the category of education and the merit award goes to Congratulations to High Learning Platform from Sri Lanka and Bangla Praise from Australia for winning the Merit Awards in the category. And now, the winner in the category of EduTech is Congratulations to Team Magic Bit from Sri Lanka. And may I now invite the representative from the Team Magic Bit to speak a few words. Hi, everyone. I'm Migara from Team Magic Bit. First of all, I must thank the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards Organizing Committee for the wonderful job they are doing and the opportunity they have given us during this difficult time for the whole world. And of course, they have given us valuable input through their judge panels for our development as well. Then I should remind my team, Anuruddha, Sudhat, Akalanka, and all who are working very hard and passionately behind Magic Bit to promote innovation and creativity for the next generation of this world. And also, I must thank the government agencies and ICTA especially, and all those who believed in Magic Bit and supported us to make this a reality. Thank you, and I thank, should thank again the organizing committee. Over to you. Congratulations to the winner and the merit awardees for their success and also to the finalists. We wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. And then we move on to the next category, reproductive health, adolescent health, and disability health diplomatic. Let us now uh, move to these categories and the preview will consist of entries from all three categories.
PhD team in Oxley's NHS Foundation Trust. Um, I was the lead uh, on the project to develop a web-based platform for children and young people with ADHD and their families. Um, the platform uh, enables families and children and young people to communicate with the team and to access uh, self-management resources. A unique feature of the platform is that schools are also able to access their platform in order to communicate with the team um, and access advice and support. We will announce the winners for each category separately. The winner in the category of reproductive health is Congratulations to the team ASNIBI from United States. And may I invite the representative from the team ASNIBI to speak a few words. I'd like to thank the organizers of the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of our investors, Merck for Mothers or MSD for Mothers, Packard Foundation, and Grand Challenges Canada. We'd also like to acknowledge the support of our customers, Chipaigo, Pathfinder, Chai, and others across India, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria. And lastly, the trust of our users that makes Ask Nibi the success that it is and will continue to be into the future. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure to be here today. Thank you. Now we will move on to the adolescent health category. And the runner up is. Congratulations to the Team B Smart from Sri Lanka for winning the runner of the book. And now the winner of the Adolescent Health category is. Congratulations to the team Headscape Focus from United Kingdom. Unfortunately, the team uh, Headscape Focus is not uh, connected with us today, so uh, we will have to move on to the next category. 
So before we move on, congratulations to the winner and the runner-up in the category of adolescent health. Now we move on to the category of disability health information. And the winner in the category of disability Congratulations to Team Kubuntu from Sri Lanka. And I would like to invite a representative from Team Kubuntu to speak a few words. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for organizing this event and I like to pay my sincere gratitude to our supervisor Dr. Pradeepa Samrasinghe and I would like to thank the, all the parents and the children who uh, contribute to us to view data and make our application success and our teammate, uh, teammates for making this event success and thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to the winners, runners up, merit awardees of the categories of reproductive health, adolescent health, and disability health. We wish you all the very best. We now move on to the category of fetus and nuclear. Unfortunately, there were no awardees in this category, but however, we are proud to present our finalists in the following week. This is Adam. Adam's doctor has truly introduced his calorie day and eight meals using the healthy plate concept. But he needs help to do both. Adam uses the Food Good Box app. The app customizes the diet according to height, weight, ethnicity, activity level, and the target body weight. Adam's doctor or nutritionist can also plan his meals using this. He's given an overview of his metabolic status before the real action begins. But with prolon food, your cells go into a fasting protecting state and consume fat from within your body, triggering autophagy, your cells' incredible self-cleaning rejuvenation process that supports healthy aging and wellness. The nutrients in prolon nourish you, but don't trigger your cells' food sensing system. In other words, prolon food mimics a fast so your cells stay in fasting mode. With the Prolon diet, you eat food, but your cells think you're fasting and rejuvenate themselves. It's like a pit stop for your body. Just as a pit stop optimizes a race car's performance,
Prevalence from Global Birth Defects, an initiative funded through the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. We are part of the Zika Plan project. We aim to build stronger birth defect surveillance systems that improve birth defect prevention and care of affected children. This first of its kind, Global Birth Defects Description and Coding app, offers a wealth of expert information at the touch of a smartphone or tablet. MomCare is a digitally enabled patient journey, a platform that mother and healthcare provider can trust, where they agree upon a path of quality maternal care with a predetermined cost. Now there is transparency and accountability, and money is only distributed to the provider once care has been given. The results? Mothers get the power to track appointments and reliably save and pay for their care. Providers are more confident that fees will be paid and paid quickly. And payers of all kinds see that their funds are going to the right place, which paints a fuller picture of the impact. With mom care, she stays connected and covered, creating a brighter world for mother and child. This is a really interesting uh, e-service of pushing out messages to women in their own languages here in Ghana. The project which is operating in 33 health facilities across Ghana has so far reached 11,157 beneficiaries, with 10,506 of them being women. of children in Pakistan are not completely vaccinated, are vaccinated late, or drop out from the system. This is due to a lack of real-time information for vaccinators to identify children at risk of defaulting or dropping out from the immunization schedule. Accurate identification of potential defaulters can be leveraged to design targeted evidence-based interventions in resource-limited settings to improve immunization coverage and timeliness. support system allows quick and accurate forecasting of routine and catch-up vaccine schedule. Our DSS uses vaccine forecasting algorithms to automatically construct the age-appropriate vaccine schedule based on the child's age and vaccination history. It has a color-coded user-friendly interface and is interoperable with any digital registry or can be used as a standalone application. To understand specific quality of care indicators based on guidelines provided by the World Health Organization that have been scientifically recognized to ensure a safe and happy childbirth. And by providing women with these tools, we offer a structured and more reliable way for you to evaluate the best provider. In turn, we give them feedback that can be improved upon. By bringing insightful and effective reviews like these to the forefront, we hope to develop an ever-growing community of mothers who care. Help us ensure the best care for moms to be across India together. HERA is designed for Syrian women and their children. With the use of its database, HERA helps the refugees keep their health records digitally. It also sends push notifications before important dates such as vaccinations for children or prenatal checkups for pregnant women. Our field experiences show us that refugees have little or no information about their health and the health system in Turkey and changing legal regulations that affect them. HERA will help Syrian refugee communities get informed legally and medically by providing them Arabic, Turkish language support.
Every year, 2 million neonatal and 250,000 maternal deaths occur during intrapartum period globally. In India, more than 80% deliveries occur with the assistance of staff nurses. Uterine contraction is one of the important parameters to track the labor progress and to diagnose complications during intrapartum period. The existing solution cardiotachography TOCO for uterine contraction monitoring is high cost, non-portable, does not give accurate intensity and displays the output in a graphical format. A skilled health worker is required to operate the device and to interpret the output from the graph. Here is an affordable, easy to use and portable uterine contraction monitoring device which is a combination of a patch and a handheld unit. The patch can be placed on the abdomen of the pregnant woman and the handheld unit displays the frequency, duration and intensity of the uterine contraction in an easy format. Help us build care and save lives. The Ministry of Health, with the support from Save the Children, piloted EPI systole intervention to address these challenges in Neno and Cho districts. Sistock is an SMS-based open source website accessible logistics management information system for all health center level EPI products. The system automatically calculates the supply needs and consumption and has contributed towards improved visibility and availability of EPI products at different levels, hence strengthening supply chain management system. We will present the Merit Awards first. And the Merit Awards for the category of Maternal and Neonatal Health goes to Congratulations to Global Birth Defects app from uh, United Kingdom and the team Chanitri from India for winning the Merit Award. Now we will present the runner-up runner award and the runner-up for the category of maternal and neonatal health goes to Congratulations to the team Predictive Analysis from Pakistan. And now 
the much awaited announcement of the category of the neonatal, or maternal and neonatal care. And the winner is, actually we have joined with Congratulations to the joint winners. And may I first invite the representative from Together, Together for Her from India to speak to you. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the Commonwealth Digital Health Awards for this opportunity and this honor today for presenting this award to us. Uh, at this moment, I will want to extend the thank to Merck for Mothers, who has been our funding partner in this journey over the last four years. And I want to say thank you to all of the Together for Her team that has made our journey and our success possible. Thank you to the doctors and the NGOs and the mothers who believe in us and make our work possible, make our progress possible. Um, Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. May I also invite the representative from Mankia, from, from Kenya, to speak a few words. Hi, everyone. Uh, wow. Um, it's a huge honor to uh, receive this award on behalf of Farm Access and Mom Care. I want to say a, a big thank you to the judges for recognizing us and also a, a big thank you to the uh, organizing committee for putting together such uh, a great uh, awards, even in such a difficult uh, circumstances. I would like to say a big thank you to our, our major funders, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and as well to MSD or Merck for Mothers uh, for supporting this project over the recent years and uh, believing that it can be scaled in uh, Tanzania and Kenya. Um, I would just like to say a big thank you to the teams on the ground, uh, as well as the ministries of health in Kenya and Tanzania and the national health insurance agencies in those countries. Uh, finally, a big thank you to Nicole Speaker, the lead of the program, um, and to all the other staff and doctors and mothers on the ground who, uh, who believe in this program and uh, uh, are leading to great success. Thank you. Congratulations to all the team winners, runners up, merit award recipients, as well as the finalists for the wonderful support rendered throughout the process of Commonwealth Digital Health Award. I wish everyone all the very best in their future endeavors. So that brings us to the end of the award ceremony. Before we conclude, let me now call upon the coordinator of the Commonwealth Digital Health Society, Dr. Pandula Siribadhara, to deliver the vote of thanks. Hello, everyone. So as you have witnessed, we have now come to the end of another round of Commonwealth Digital Health Awards. This, in fact, is the fourth iterative Commonwealth Digital Health Awards, which, uh, as you all know, had been delayed due to the pandemic and we had to adopt different technologies in both the judging as well as in hosting the event. I hope every one of you enjoyed this event and now we have come to its conclusion. However, this is not the conclusion or the end for the finalists or for those who have submitted the, to the award or for those who won. This will just be the end of the beginning. The Commonwealth Center for Digital Health will always be with you in every step of the way and we are looking forward to collaborate with you in your future endeavors with our partner network. But before we continue, I would like to mention a few names and few organizations. First and foremost, I would like to thank 
Professor Vajra Desanai for his visionary leadership and the initiative that led to this magnificent effect. I would also like to thank the board of the Commonwealth Centre for Digital Health, consisting of Mr. Anup Singh, uh, Professor Sinclair Stockman, and Mr. Tony Singhraya for their unwavering support. I would also like to thank the Deputy Chief Secretary General of the ITU, Malcolm Johnson, for his unwavering support and also his team for contributing to the judging process as well as hosting. Sadly, we missed your warmth in as a host because of the pandemic, but we look forward to working with you and having our event in Geneva in the future. I would also like to thank the British Medical Journal, the Digital Innovations team there, led by Ashley McKim, for his and the team's support in taking this event to the masses. Their support has enabled us to reach uh, many number of applicants and therefore uh, contributed largely to the success of this event. In addition, I would also like to thank many other partners who have uh, come up, came with us in this journey, including um, um, Analogy Partners, uh, European Connected Health Alliance, um, Health Informatics Society of Sri Lanka, um, as well as uh, other uh, other partners uh, and individuals supported. Last but not least, I must thank uh, the, the the biomedical informatics community in Sri Lanka, Commonwealth Digital Health Fellow, who has contributed in making this event a success. Namely, I would like to thank Dr. Roshan Eva Patirina, Dr. Shamika Sena Nayaka, Dr. Lahiru Raj Karuna, um, uh, Dr. Kaushalya Mendes, Dr. Jayatri Vijay Ratna, uh, Dr. Prasad Ranatunga, Dr. Bhutatunga, as well as others who have contributed in so many ways, including being moderators and the judges and, uh, and in providing technical support to make this event a success. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have arrived at the conclusion of the event. I would like to thank all those applicants who submitted for this event. Without you, this event wouldn't have been successful. Thank you very much. A good night from Colombo and good day to everyone. Thank you.